Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy Dominaria United Commander Precon decks? As has become tradition with each new Magic set released, Dominaria United is accompanied by new Commander pre-constructed decks, two of them to be exact, but whereas previous Commander Precon pairs released alongside standard sets have tended to be cheaper and less carefully curated than the once a year Commander Precon collection that we get each spring, these decks are a little bit more, to use Watsi's own words, extra special. And to reflect that these Dominaria United Commander Precons are extra special, the cost of them is closer to what you'd expect the once a year Precons to cost. So if you're spending around $40 for one of these Precons, can you expect to get your money's worth? What notable reprints do these decks contain and what new cards of value will you find in them? Most importantly, how well do these decks play against one another or against your friend's commander decks? All those questions and more are what's in store, so let's take a look. Both of these precons from Dominaria United are helmed by a Planeswalker commander card, but each has a substitute legendary creature of the deck's same color identity that can be used as its general instead if you'd prefer. The first precon, Legends Legacy, is a Mardu legendary tribal deck led by Dihada, Bender of Wills, and backed up by Shinij, Sleeper's Scourge. The second is called Painbow? No, it's not really called Painbow. That's like what players are called. No, no, that's actually what it's called, Painbow. A five color deck led by none other than Jared Carthalion himself and backed up by Jensen Carthalion, Druid Exile. Talk about nepotism. Huh? Huh? Painbow is the first five color commander precon we've seen since 2017 when Wizards of the Coast printed the Ur-Dragon precon. Jared is not as powerful as the Ur-Dragon, but there's a lot about the Painbow precon that stacks up favorably with the Ur-Dragon precon. It's not easy to build a five color commander deck with the inherent constraints that a precon deck carries with it. On one hand, if the deck's mana doesn't work, then the product is a failure and nobody will be happy with their purchase. On the other hand, it's still a precon, and therefore you can't exactly stuff the deck full of fetch lands, shock lands, triomes, or any other powerful but expensive mana fixing because, well, you just can't. The Ur-Dragon precon tried to mitigate this problem by including a full set of the tapped Tri-Lands from Alara and Tarkir, as well as one of each Vivid Land from Lorwyn, but the resulting mana base was suspect to say the least. In fact, if you go back to my video reviewing it, I was highly critical of how bad that deck's mana base was. Sure, the Ur-Dragon was one of the best five color commanders, the deck itself extremely powerful, but the mana base was a shambling nightmare. So did play design solve the mana dilemma for their five color precon this time? In my opinion, not only did they do so, but quite brilliantly. Beyond the easy includes that are common in a commander precon, such as Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, and Terramorphic Expanse, the Painbow mana base can be broken down into three categories Tapped Tri Lands, Slow Fetches, and the Tango Lands from Battle for Zendikar, so called because it takes two to tango. While the Tri Lands were present in the Ur Dragon precon, the really clever inclusion in Painbow are the second two categories of lands. By including one of each Slow Fetch, fetch and tango land, play design created an actually quite functional mana base. The slow fetches wouldn't be particularly strong if you didn't have dual lands with basic land types to go get with them. The tango lands have those basic land types and therefore complement the slow fetches nicely. That is, the inclusion of prairie stream and smoldering marsh means that bad river is a four color land. Think about that a moment. The only color it can't fetch in this deck list is green. In fact, I'd say the pain bow mana base is a reasonable mimic of the same mana base you'd love to have if you were building your own five color deck from scratch. Slow fetches stand in for regular fetch land 
lands, so you got an easy upgrade path there. Tango lands substitute for shock lands, and the tri lands act as triomes. Some of you might feel this is a strange aspect of the deck to not only praise, but open the video with, but so often these precons just get slapped with 20 to 30 basic lands and a collection of tap lands within the deck's color identity, and then just sent off to print. Games of magic aren't fun unless you have a reasonable expectation of, you know, casting your spells? Finally, play design not only recognized that you need to have a good mana base in a commander precon, but somehow, amazingly, they managed to do it in a five color one. Honestly, a lot of people I know who play five color commanders could take a look at this mana base and say, yeah, that's a really good template. Just upgrade a few of those lands to fetches and you're good to go. Turns out it's not just the mana base that's cleverly constructed here. Everything you'd want out of a budget five color deck is in here. You've got ramp and mana fixing. You've got cheap removal to pair with your tap lands so you don't fall too far behind curve. You've got cards that make your tapped lands enter untapped. You even have plenty of board wipes to help you catch back up after spending your early turns taking care of your mana. Lastly, you have a handful of the five color creature pool's greatest hits, plus a couple sweet first time printings. Ultimately, there's only one crucial thing that the five color deck is lacking, a cohesive strategy for winning the game once you've gotten your mana sorted and caught back up with a board wipe or two. The top end of this deck is a bit confused, with some powerful big multicolored creatures and some decidedly less powerful multicolored creatures. You've got two of the apexes from Akoria, but no other other mutate creatures, meaning the abilities of Nithroi and Luna will likely only trigger once. You've got the lover of big creatures Atla Pelini, Nest Tender, but the biggest creature you can hit off of her ability exiles itself if it is cheated into play. The commander doesn't really help provide a direction to move in either. Jared basically just rewards putting big creatures into play and then making them even bigger, which is fine, just somewhat uninspiring. Big creature beatdown can be a difficult strategy to pull off in a multiplayer format where your opponents each have 40 life and presumably their own removal. It's also a bit at odds with the board board wipes that come with this deck. In my analysis, this is the reverse of the Ur-Dragon deck. An absolutely brilliant mana base as well as well-constructed support system with no actual strategy or payoff, whereas Ur-Dragon had an amazing strategy and payoff, but terrible mana base and lackluster support system. Oh, and yeah, that's also really weird too. This is the first commander deck ever, ever to come without Soul Ring. No Soul Ring in a precon? Uh, what's going on? What about Legends Legacy? Well, this is a red, black, and white deck helmed by Dihada, Bender of Wills. Every single one of the 28 creatures in this deck are legendary, which is good, since this is a deck that needs legendary creatures in order to operate. Your goal for these legendary creatures? Turn them sideways. This is a beat down deck through and through. Put legends into play and give those legends a buff and then smash them into your opponent. The mana base is functional with one of each on color temple and pain land, plus a smattering of other useful duels. Dihada is by far a much better and more powerful commander than Jared, packing a powerful card advantage ability in addition to buffing your legends. However, the deck itself is also much more fragile to removal and in particular board wipes. Some Something the five color deck has no shortage of. Perhaps that's why Legends Legacy has several ways to recur your creatures after they get destroyed. Make no mistake, this is not a deck built to grind out a victory from behind. Legends Legacy wants to get out ahead and then stay ahead. You have a smattering of removal, although on average your removal costs one to two more mana than pain bows. There's also a bit of artifact ramp as well as one of each on color monument from Amonkhet to help accelerate casting your spells, as well as provide you with a benefit each time you you cast a creature spell.
For a deck that cares about having creatures in play, you'd think there'd be a few more creatures in this deck's deck list. 28 creatures means not even half your non-land cards are creatures. I would have expected a number in the mid-30s to say the least, and perhaps even higher than that. Both in terms of gameplay as well as just deck construction in a head-to-head -head matchup Painbow has the leg up. The deck simply has enough board wipes to keep the threat posed by Legends Legacy at bay. I don't expect Legends Legacy to fare all that much better against other decks either. Aggro strategies don't tend to be very successful in Commander, and the Dihada deck just doesn't have that much else to offer in terms of angles of attack. Overwhelmingly, in my testing, Painbow fared a lot better. This is the deck that I felt confident sitting down against friends with with their established level 7 Commander decks. But that's just gameplay and deck construction. What about financial value? In terms of financial value, Legends Legacy is actually the better buy than Painbow. The total value of the cards from Legends Legacy is $176.08, while Painbow's total value is much lower at $152 and change. Interestingly, Painbow is the one that is getting marked up on the secondary market, whereas most retailers are selling Legends Legacy for $40 and Painbow for $45 to $50. As usual, do not pay markups. There are so many Commander decks available throughout your local game stores and online retailers from previous sets selling for below MSRP, and in a few months, both of these will likely be there as well. If you wanna buy one of these at MSRP, that's great, but regardless of the value within or the construction of these deck lists, do not pay markups. What if we eliminated all bulk from these decks? Adding up the value of all cards worth a dollar or more, Legends Legacy is still $145 in change with Painbow at 119. Legends Legacy contains five cards worth more than $10, including a long-awaited reprint of Shizo, Death's Storehouse. The other four are new cards. Gerard's Hourglass Pendant, the Reaver Cleaver, Verak, Warped Sengir, whereas Painbow only has three cards that are worth more than $10. Two-Headed Hellkite, Tiller Engine, and the face of the deck himself, Jared Carthelian. There are still 28 total cards in Painbow, though, that are worth a dollar or more. Essentially, you've got roughly the same number of cards worth more than a buck, but you've got a couple extra cards of value in Legends Legacy with more financial value. I do have some concerns about how these decks fare as an introduction to the Commander format for new players, especially Painbow. Five-color decks are often not the best choice for teaching someone the game or even the format. Important aspects of Magic the Gathering, such as the color pie and the limitations of each color, are lost or just diminished when playing a five-color deck. There's more to keep track of, including the difficult task of just managing your mana. I mean, if I'm brand new to the game or even the format, knowing to fetch what the slow fetches, land sequencing, this is all a nightmare for new players, and it's easy to have a bad experience if your mana isn't working. So while I think the best overall deck construction of the two is the Painbow deck, I would recommend all new players towards the Legends deck. This is the one to get if you're a new player. While it does have some cards that new players might have trouble parsing, such as Odric, Lunar Marshall, and Varric Warped Sengir, it overall can be piloted with ease and will help teach a player both the game and the format. In many ways, I could have seen these two decks marketed as thus, the deck for existing players and the deck for new players, but that's just a marketing decision. Final conclusion. Overall, both Painbow and Legends Legacy are higher quality products than we're used to getting as Commander Precons attached to standard sets. These are each in their own different way in line with the once a year Commander products. While Legends Legacy is more valuable financially, it is the better choice for new players. And while Painbow's mana base construction is simply sublime, its top end and end of game strategy does leave a little to be desired and is better suited for the advanced players. But overall, these are excellent products, even at the outrageous price Wizards is asking for them. There's a lot here for players new and old and everyone in betwixt, and the grade is a solid, enthusiastic A. But remember, don't pay markups, and if you do want to peruse for lower-priced Commander precons from previous sets, you should go to your local game store, where you're supporting your Magic community 
community by spending your money there. If your local game store doesn't have what you're looking for, you can check out cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC, where amongst many other products, I have listed their lower priced commander pre-cons, as well as many great deals on singles and product accessories. Looking to get a game of commander of your own? Well, the Talarian Community College Discord is now open to the public in its looking for games section. Here is where you can go to meet with other players looking for a game of webcam commander, or even modern, popper, legacy, or just casual kitchen table. It's all there and it's all free, moderated and open and run by me. Quite the sight to see. So when thinking of discords and looking for games, think TCC. And I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out greatly just by remembering to subscribe, sharing this video with a friend, or leaving a comment. What do you think of these two commander decks and how well do they stand up against previous pre-cons? Let me know in the comments below. Hello. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Today, bring your favorite or one of your most favorite Commander decks. I have brought my dear beloved Grimgrin. Brought the Mimeoplasm. Uh, and I've brought um, Noyan Dawn. And so I ask everyone to take their deck and please pass it to the right. <laughs> of course. I want like this yeah. deck to win specifically because it's mine. But how would you feel if I killed you with your deck? What does my commander do? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting a better draw than I've ever gotten out of that deck. What do you want me to do? The thing is, is he's like good at magic, and that's usually not the case. Oh, good, a land that comes into play untapped, unlike every other land in this deck. I'm like a proud father watching his son take his first step. A lady luck smiles upon a British man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't, don't yeah. meow! <laughs>